I think of Georgia as a European country. There are several countries that, um, you know, there are small that you can definitely see a big change happening rather soon. But um, the communism part is the one that gets me. It's, yeah. the, it's the thing that really <laughs> uh, ruined Georgia uh, in many ways. But then it's also something that I think we're a good example of how you can fight fight it Absolutely. and how you can try and make things better. Absolutely. Very beautifully said. Uh, actually, I believe that uh, mm, George, I got this success uh, because of uh, your father Yeah. a lot. And uh, when I arrived here like uh, one year and a half ago, uh, you know, I was, I didn't, uh, I didn't hear about uh, your father before. Mm-hmm. But uh, so I started to talk about okay, what is the background, political background, societal background, and everything. And uh, once my uh, my assistant Annie she said, uh, uh, you know, you would you would really love uh, Kahab and Dukidze. Mm-hmm. And I say why? Uh, because he was a libertarian, and he was uh, uh, he really re- reformist. He really helped the the country moving on, moving forward, and. Uh, and I think this is, uh, and this is from from now that I was started to be interested in in, uh, in your in your father and what he what he did. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think everybody here in the country has a very positive vision of, of what he. Did. I mean, you cannot. <laughs> of course, you can't do anything without being liked by everyone. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> uh, th- m- a lot of people. So I, my personal um, sort of understanding of this is that people, when they come up to me and they try to pay their respect to me, I mean, to my father through me, so to say. Yeah. Uh, and even those who hated him or didn't like him, they even they can admit that he did amazing job. Yeah. Um, but there is a small portion of people, of course, who will say that I gave an interview recently about my parenting style. So something completely unrelated to my dad, something completely unrelated to like Georgia or politics or anything like that. And someone commented below, said, oh, does this girl know that her, hu- that her father had um, uh, thrown out thousands of scientists on the street and mm-hmm. they're left <laughs> homeless? And <laughs> it's an, until this day, it is the same way. And it's all because of him that the science of Georgia is ruined. And I'm like... Like, I don't even think there's a point in fighting with that person because yeah. I don't think he understands, you know, truly what that meant. So, <sighs> yeah. Um, but, um, you know, it's really interesting. Uh, this November, it's been eight years since my father died. And of course, I really miss him because my dad was, I was really close to my dad. Um, I don't know if you know the whole backstory of how I, oh, I, I knew him, but I didn't know that he was my dad. And yeah. I found out that he was my dad when I was 18. Can, 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 we, can we just go yeah, back sure. and just uh, have the story from the beginning? Because Yeah, I'll try to be, sh- I'll try to be quick. But otherwise, it's like seven seasons of a, a Mexican soap opera. Here. <laughs> um, but um, so yeah, my, uh, I had a family. I had my mom and my dad and then my parents divorced when I was 10 and after they divorced my mom started um, well she kind of she was like would you like to go with me to this dinner with my friend and I said sure yeah so we started going out to dinners with this guy who's this ginormous just like just this big guy who was pretty scary you know and he didn't he wasn't really cautious around me as a child as a 10 year old because he was saying all these sometimes inappropriate jokes I would say but you could see that he was like this big figure, not phys- not just physically, but like his presence was like very, you know, it's, it was just amazing. And, um, and so we like, we, we started kind of, we became friends, so to say. I mean, it's weird because I'm 10 and he's like 40 or something, 40 something. Um, but it was, um, it was a, yeah, I can't really tell you. I, I will tell you what was going on in my head. Um, he was a very powerful man, and you could see it from that he was a powerful man, just the way he would say to like a, a waiter would come, and they would be petrified of him, mm. and they would just be like, "Oh my God, like mm. I brought something <laughs> wrong." Just Jesus. And um, and somehow, I never was afraid of him like that. I was not afraid to tell to tell him. To, to reply to him something that I disagreed and you know I thought that maybe that's what he likes because he's so used to people being like yes 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 of course mm. we'll do everything whatever and I'll just be like no 
this is the whatever this is stupid and he'll, he'll be like what would you mean how can this be stupid and i'm like yeah this is not how it should be done which now in retrospect obviously i understand that this is such a trait of his mm. that i have um and so it's been um, a couple of years and then I went, he, he helped my mom send me to a boarding school in the UK, hence my sometimes very awfully posh accent. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, So he helped finance yeah, he the helped, studies? Yeah, yeah, he helped finance the studies. Why um, he was not... Uh, um, he was not, he was just a friend of my mom's. A friend, got Yeah, it. he was a friend because, you know, you don't really... When you're a child, you don't really think about, you know, figures, how much, what's your salary? How much is this person making? You mm. kind of, but I was 14, you know, and um, I sort of, I sort of thought that he was just helping my mom, mm. uh, you know, like, just like I would, I would help you. Like, you, like if we are in the McDonald's together and you're like, oh, I left my wallet, but like, I'll pay for you, you know, it's okay. And for me, I thought that A, I didn't know how much the, the studying costs and B, I thought that, you know, he definitely has some money mm. and so he can afford paying for whatever like i don't know what the the um, arrangement was so to say um and then uh, it was just shortly after my 18th birthday when uh, we were it was um, I, I i was in the boarding school was in bristol and um we came i came to london to see my mom and kaha also came to london because we would see each other still like even when i was studying in school Mm, and I needed <laughs> I needed a charger, like an adapter, because in the UK they have a different um, plug. And he's like, oh, I have one in my room. And I said, mm, sure, yeah, I'll go up to your room. And it was a little, like, it was starting to get a little strange because, you know, he was sort of, like, <laughs> I don't want to sound like it's, it was a bad thing, but it was like he was, like, hugging me and sometimes, like, stroking me. And I was just like, okay, it's getting a little weird. <laughs> And so mm, when he handed me that uh, plug and he was like, oh, he, like he called me something along the lines of a daughter. Is in Russian, it would be like, uh, like um, have it daughter, like something like this. Like it sounds poor, poorly in, um, poorly translated in English, but in my head, I was like, yeah, like, well, you definitely have been like my second dad to me. Uh, you've been so um, supportive. And so, you know, like you helped me through so much. Um, and he was like, what do you mean? And I said, well, you know, like you've always been like my second dad. And he's like, yeah, but I'm, I'm your biological father. <laughs> I said, excuse me. He's like, yeah, have, has no one ever told you? I said, no, what? <laughs> he's wow. like, yeah, it was like, it was like in Star Wars. Oh, yeah, I am your father, <laughs> you know, like that sort of thing. Um, and so, and that was, a, that was a big shock, of course, because something like, it's like a pillar of your understanding of the world that you have your mom you have your dad and this is everything else is based on that that's like the first knowledge that you gain as a human sort of mm. on this earth um but then i have this um i have the, there's this chinese saying that says that if you can't change the situation change the way you think about the situation i thought you know there's no point in in trying to uh, be sad about it really that you know I lived in a lie and that all of these things that I thought were not how they were um and I thought look I have two dads both of them really love me and some people have none and like what I, I can't really be complaining you know and so that was my life um uh you know going forward and me and Kaha became super close so after I turned 18 my mom was sort of out of the equation and it was just me and him, and we became like, almost like best friends because um, my my mom had like uh, someone like her another boyfriend of hers that who she was with. My all my friends had like either brother or sister or someone. I had no one, you know. I am so, I have so many parents, and like I'm the mm. only child. How is that impossible? But um, uh, and Kaha had. Um, yeah, he was also, I wouldn't say that he was, yeah, I could say that he was quite lonely. And um, it was very interesting that after Wh what his... What year is it? What year is 2000, it? Uh, 2008. 2008. Mm -hmm. And um, it was very interesting that after he had died and all of these people that knew him came to his funeral and there was all of these people who knew a side of him but never knew him fully, mm -hmm. like who he was. Because I knew a side of him, but then his people who he worked knew a side of him. Then there was his, there were his Moscow Russian <coughs> friends who knew a side of him. But like, mm. there wasn't anyone who knew everything. And I guess, 
I guess I understand why he did that because he well starting from the fact that he was you know he he worked in the 90s in Ru- in Russia post soviet Russia where it was just the most horrible well not the most horrible but like uh, definitely like in hell one mm. of the places would be like mm. that you know mm. like where people just got shot like three of his directors of his company were shot in the space of like a year and a half well wow. yeah so just definitely very scary and super dangerous and so i think he just learned that it's better not to have not to trust everyone 100 sort of thing you know and to, to keep something to yourself um but me and him were really close and he was sort of like my my best friend in a way that he knew much more than my mum about me he knew about my boyfriends he he helped me pick uh, my graduation gown he helped me he obviously helped well not helped me but he um with my studies he was supporting me with that and um after i graduated he was obviously telling me that uh, <laughs> bachelor's diploma from King's College of London, which is top 25 university in the world. He was, he, well, he is 20, it's in the top 25, so to say. Mm, it's not good enough. It's pretty shit, actually. And, That's what um, he, he told you. Yes, them. he definitely told me that. And, um, and then, so I went to NYU and I did a postgraduate diploma in digital marketing, which was also, actually, well, I can say from my side that it was pretty shit <laughs> because I knew everything that was, sorry for my language, I hope this is uh, not, um, well, I, d- I don't think, yeah. It's not d- censored. Mm, it's yeah. Okay. It was, I think shit is a pretty good word to describe what I got as a degree. Um, so that's, I think, uh, yeah, I shouldn't mince my words in that. Um, and did, did you, were you able to see the, uh, the professional or just as a dad mm, it, that's a really good question I think that um, I never really understood the magnitude of things because that's not like when you meet your parents do you ask them do you go into fully de- full details into what he is doing with his life in terms mm. of work you try to you know you try to be like okay work is work this mm-hmm. is family time this is and most of the time it would be I think um, I, d- I well I, I could actually say that I don't think that he ever stopped working. I once asked him actually. I said like I was like what why why do you work so much? I mean sh- clearly you have you've earned enough money in your life and you have it's enough for you to be living comfortably and not be struggling. You know like if you stopped working right this second and no more work for the rest of your life you'd be okay. And he said yeah but you know that's like a drug. You never stop working you you want to stop but then you just can't it's like you need something you need the drive you need the energy uh, so, coming so in. what was his driver was it accomplishments um no no he had other than working in the government he still had other businesses that he was doing and he was also like he had a fish farm for example in um he he had a no let's start he, well he had a fish farm in greece he had a fish laboratory in United States in San Diego that were working on genetically modified fish, which actually after Kaja's death, FDA had approved that genetically modified fish because he was saying that it was nonsense that, like, you know, like carrots, what color are carrots, right? They're orange. And in reality, they weren't orange to begin with. They were this beigey color. And then they made it orange mm. for the the kings of the Netherlands because orange is their color. So mm. it was like a present for mm. the kings, uh, king and king and queen of the Netherlands. So it it is genetically modified. So now we say like, oh, this is organic. I mean, not to. I mean, <laughs> don't want to ruin your <laughs> uh, food. Um, vegan, yeah. yeah, but um, he was definitely pro uh, genetically modified uh, food, and he said that. If it's correctly done, I think it's you know it's definitely something to be to, to look into. Uh, and he had other things. He had a um, fiber optics. So, so it was just not. It's just like all these different things because he was a scientist, you mm. know. So for him, it was just interesting from um, discovery just, just perspective. Yeah, exactly. From, from, from that perspective. Yeah, and then <coughs> and then I think that the main thing was the education uh, because. Um, I think you're right to say that Kaja is the main person to to whom you can attribute all of the reforms that had happened. Although I definitely think that 
without Misha Saakashvili, who was the president uh, at the time uh, after the Rose Revolution, there would be no Kaha. Without uh, Kaha, there would be no Misha. So it's it's sure. a complex thing. But Kaha was the main kind of brain engine of Absolutely. what was happening. And, and thanks to him, we have a lot of what we have now is still, you know, his doings. So he did all of these reforms and then he realized that actually it's all cool that he that he did that and that, that this in economic miracle had happened, but you then, you know, laws can be changed. You can change, like, what's happening right now, actually, is that a lot of the laws that Kaha did are now being overturned and they're being, you know, the, the swayed in a different direction. Yeah. So he, so sorry, I'll just finish my thoughts. So he, he really, he quickly understood that if you want to change the country, you want to start from a young, from a different level. Mm -hmm. So where to start? Obviously, from the brains, from the mentality of these people. So that's why he, he funded um, the universities and, and uh, so on. You know, uh, I don't know what was what's th what's the name of the program that you were talking about. Oh. Yes. I didn't hear that. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With and Kaha? <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So Anna was uh, living in Moscow at that time, and uh, when she sh uh, was watching the show, she said, I want to go to Georgia. And, you know, I find it super smart, this show, because, first of all, you're working on people. Mm -hmm. Apparently, if I understood the, the rules properly, you, have the, you had some uh, uh, missions that, uh, you know, uh, people needed to, to do, so he was... Uh, basically judging people on how they can optimize things and you're doing it with young people and you're doing it in an entertaining way mm -hmm. so you know all these ingredients together is, is, is it's brilliant because that's the best way to uh, inseminate the brain with the yeah, right yeah, ideas sure. uh, I have a question how did he build his philosophy because <laughs> Yeah, sure. No, I, I can I can tell you that. Um, I, I wonder. I what finish? Can you finish that? Because yeah. because of what? Beca yeah. Because of Soviet Union, you know, where do you get in those information? I mean, in during the the eighties in the U.S., you know, you had the Chicago School, which was very prevalent. But how do you get those information in in Soviet Union, and how do you implement them right after? Uh, because even being a libertarian, I think even in post uh, uh, post Soviet, I'm not sure it was it was very. Um, Popular, or popular, or yeah. popular idea or ideology. I think that uh, from the beginning, he was a very, very smart child. He was a very smart child of his uh, parents, who were also super smart people. He was his father was a mat mathematician. His mom was an anthropologist, and they were all, you know, he was reading books constantly. Always, um, there's a story of, about him, about Kaha, how when he was um, working on his um, dissertation, I think it was or something like in a lab. They were working in a lab. And they would have all of these um, uh, news articles. This is back in the, I think, 80s even, that are like on the table, that all the things that they want to read. And all of the people, mm, they would have like a stack. And then Kaha would have this much. And he would read all of them. And he would remember all of it. And um, I think, I mean, genetic-wise, I think he was very talented. And it's sad that the genes stopped right at Kaha and didn't <laughs> pass on to me. Um, but um, I mean, I definitely got I definitely got his face. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, I got some of his other traits, obviously, but um, I can't say that I'm, uh, I'm that I'm on that level. And I think that happens only once in uh, like 100 years, you get someone who is like Ilya Chachavadze or Kaha Bendukidze or like so on, you know, like in, in a small country like that, I'm talking. And um, um, he just didn't really like rules. He didn't really like rules. And uh, he, um, he didn't really, I'll tell you what. So he was late to his lectures when he was uh, working in the, um, he was doing his uh, doctorate's uh, d degree. And um, and then they s they wouldn't let him in. It was at eight in the morning. It was something ridiculous. I can't remember the story really well. But and um, he would come in eight o three, and they wouldn't let him in. And he would be like, "What the hell? Like this is so stupid. This is crazy." But this is Soviet, you know, Soviet Russia. And um, he wanted to go um, abroad for a science. I think it was an exchange program, something like this. And then they wrote to him. 
uh, they in Russia they had to for you to go abroad even to a um, communism friendly countries you had to get an approval like you had to have a profile someone had to profile you and be like okay he is a decent person he does this and this he is allowed to go so if you were a um, you know a rebel if you were breaking stuff or breaking rules or anything they can't they wouldn't let you go and so of course he was not a very easy person <laughs> and he would fight he would argue with his like uh, whoever was his head um, head of his program and stuff and uh, and they wrote to him they wrote in his um, profile that he had a temperament te- temper- temperament um, is that the right word in English? He was tempered. Tem- yeah, that's so that they wrote that they he had a te- uh, he had a temper, mm. and then like and Kaha was like, what? Which temper is it? Am I a sanguinic? Am I a, a um, what's the other one? Um, or whatever the, the so he was like, which one? This is this doesn't make sense. You just wrote like I have a temperature. So what what is the temperature like? Mm. That doesn't make any sense. And then they just they basically didn't let him go and. Um, I think I think it was then that he realized that there's no future in this country, well, in Soviet Union, that it just doesn't make sense. And I, j- I think he was just a very logical person, and I think that the libertarianism, so the freedom, he's a, he was a freedom-loving person, and so I think that was sort of a very natural um, um, pro- progression, you know, of who he was. And... Um, he was talking about. Um, he was talking to his friends. It's it's in his book. Was it's a shame it's not in either of the languages that you speak. <laughs> but uh, I'll see what I can do about trying to find an English version of that. Um, but um, there is a book about Gacha's life that um, they wrote, like a series of interviews. And there he says that um, he he was talking about the kind of reforms that he would really like to see in Russia. Well, this is after the post-Soviet, the post-Soviet Union had collapsed. And um, someone was saying, oh, like this sounds exactly like Hayek. And he's like, who? And he didn't know mm. Hayek at the time. And then someone just gave him the... Wow. So, you know, it's like, it just, it was a very he natural... He was a libertarian, but from the first principle, yeah, by himself. Yeah, exactly. You know, if you think about this, I think it makes total sense why someone can be a libertarian. Sure, sure, sure. I I didn't know, but I was a libertarian myself yeah. also, like in a way that I think that just give a person more freedom, more trust, and like I think that they're not going to damage themselves. Like the government yeah. should be my nanny, you know? Mm-hmm. So, so I think okay. that, um, mm, I think that, yeah. I think maybe that's, that the freedom-loving part is definitely inherited from KB. <laughs> Do you believe that he was... Ejected from the government because maybe it's too much for people to hold the responsibility of their of their own life, and he was just pushing f- uh, on the other side, like say, "Hey, you're responsible for your life. You don't need the <laughs> government." Uh, no, I don't think so because you could you could still, you know, you think that okay, the, there is this like sometimes people think about the government as like a room that is a mess, and I think that's a good option. Um, that good example because you try to tidy up your room right but then other people are also living in that room and they create other ma- so you like oh I've cleaned up this corner I'm mm. moving on to the next corner but that someone else had already done something there mm. that I need to fix again so it's like a never ending cycle really so you know, I don't think that I don't think that was the reason why um, why he left the government I think it was um, there was just inner f- political forces because politics is really ugly and it's definitely not as straightforward as we think you know of it um so um i think that he thought that he he he's better off at at doing at spending more of his energy on the education because Mm. that's where really that's that's the the whole goal if you think about if your mission is to change the country sure sure this is where you need to start yeah sure definitely fantastic um, no, really, it's, uh, I'm, v- I'm very, uh, I really admire Kaha uh, Bendukidze. Um, I think, you know, even if you take him out of Georgia or the region, he would still be an exceptional person. Yeah, uh, so, the, so at the beginning, sorry, at the beginning of our meeting, I, I said, and I bet I didn't finish this, that I really, it's been eight years, and I really miss him like my dad. But the more time goes past, I really miss him as the 
reformer, as the statements, statesman, as the educator, because he was just, I mean, we are in globally, not just in Georgia, but like globally, so many different and terrible and just just inadequate things are happening. And you are, it's so hard to find this sort of, you know, macro vision as to, okay, wh- how will this affect me? How will this affect everything else that is happening? And I think that he was really good at that. Although at the same time, he was really micro at the same, you know, as well. And he could tell you what's going on in the cells, you know, like to the cells, he would know everything. And um, yeah, he was just, um, I'm definitely very jealous of him, uh, I guess, of his brain. I'm really annoyed and mad at myself that you rightfully had asked me about whether I ever got to see his professional side, that I didn't use the opportunity. Like, if I yeah. had all of that time that I have now, the, uh, all of the time that I had with Kaha, if I had it right now, oh my God, yeah. I would use it so much better. But, you know, time is time is is time, and you only understand certain things, you know, when you when the time goes by. Mm. But um, I have a funny story for you um, about communism because that's how w- what we started. When I was 18, we were talking with my dad about, s- I don't remember what it was about, but the, the premise of it was that I said that, you know, communism is not such a bad thing. <laughs> and he was like, what, what, what do you mean? He kind of was so shocked that he wasn't, he didn't scream at King because he would scream. Most of the time he was just a lot of screaming and being saying that I'm stupid, which is very fair enough, you know, but it's not the kind of style of parenting that you would expect, um, that you would want. Um, and he was just like, what do you mean? I was like, well, obvi- I said, obviously it's a utopia, like it doesn't work, but as an idea, you know, it makes sense that everyone has things equally, that everyone has, you know, like why should this person be living in a seven you know seven room flat when i live in a one room flat with three other people like that doesn't make sense it, well, no i lived in a two room flat with my mom grandma and my uncle and then there's me so there's four four of us in a two room flat there we go sorry the math was just really off and um and he was like well to what he was just so he was like well, to what extent would you like things to be fair would you like everyone to have a uniform mm. <laughs> he said I said, well, maybe having a uniform would also be really cool. You know, you don't have to, you wouldn't have to think about what you were wearing. You wouldn't have to think about, you kind of, everyone was the same and you would have to stand out with your personality, for example. <laughs> when I say things out loud like this now, I'm just like, oh my God, nice to, how, how did he not kill you back there and then? <laughs> um, and then, of course, he screamed at the end because he was like, this is the most stupid thing I've ever heard. But he sort of let me have that moment because, you know, now when I see people who are young and who also have a similar similar ideas, because I wasn't trying, you know, I wasn't trying to uh, f- um, sort of be uh, provoke. I wasn't trying to provoke him for sure. It was genuinely my thoughts at the time because I thought that, you know, like sort of like I'm very, I'm very logical and very mathematical, if you say, you know, like I like symmetry. So in that sense, communism is super symmetrical. It's super mm, like mm. it's symmetry everywhere, mm, really. Mm. Um, but um, he he said that, you know, that's it's actually a really unfair system because why? Why? Like you're a brain surgeon. You studied for six years. You worked really hard. You didn't sleep, didn't see your wife or your children or whoever. Then you started working. You are working super hard now and and you get and you get the same salary as someone who who is like a admin person for like in a coffee shop or whatever like sub, you know like it's not fair like it's not that's not the same because like that person didn't do any all of that work and didn't do mm-hmm. all of that you know hard energy input and why is how is that fair that it's equal you're thinking as an engineer as well you're talking about energy input and <laughs> output yeah, so. yeah. No, actually, my my dad gave me this test um, once, which is uh, a test that they give to, I think, the school kids to see whether they're capable of becoming engineers. And you have to like twist certain. Mm, I, I don't remember what the test was, but you have to twist certain um, shapes and see what is the reflection of that shape and what. Could the, and anyway, and I passed the test, and he was really. Pl- he, of course, he didn't say anything. He was just like. Okay. It's okay. okay. Yeah. yeah it's okay. <laughs> Do you think we should let, uh, you know, because maybe you were lucky in the sense that 
when you had those IDs, you had someone to confront you with those with, with the with the invalidity of those IDs. And today, you know, uh, it doesn't matter the validity of the ID; it can grow uh, because of uh, you know nobody wants to hurt feelings and things like that. And um, you know, if those if parasitic IDs or toxic IDs mm -hmm. grow, then pretty soon you have a failed state, failed society, failed family, failed everything. So, you know, uh, to have someone who's just say no, that's bullshit. What yeah. you're saying is totally stupid. You know, that's a chance because, you know, he puts a seed into your, your brain and it will grow when it will grow. He hello, yes, yeah. that's me, definitely. Yeah. De definitely Kaha to tell you at any given moment he was happy to tell you that this is bullshit and I'll tell you why. Not just, mm. so it's not that he was saying that your opinion was shit. He would tell you that the logic on which you're basing it is really poor. Amazing. Um, yeah, no, I am, um, I am very, definitely very sad that um, I can't tap into can't like you know somehow but maybe he put he it. put the seeds and you don't know well, when they will grow right he definitely put some seeds otherwise i wouldn't be here because you know I, it also took me quite a um, i had to go through quite a challenging war almost um uh in i had three court cases with my uh, with my father's ex-wife um in georgia russia and uh united kingdom i won all three of them and um I, yeah, I think maybe like 0.1% of what he had, I definitely have, but still Perse not in enough. Perseverance? <laughs> in perseverance, you uh, mean? In perse no, in, in, in like, I, w I wouldn't say that I'm, I wouldn't say that I'm, uh, uh, no, I will say like this. I would definitely say that I'm street smart. And yeah, I, I, I just want to go. So you were talking about being street smart. So when you grow up, you don't grow up with Kaha's money, right? Definitely, no. No, I didn't. I had. I was very poor, and uh, I, and even when I Kaha was in my life, he was still very much telling me that I'm very poor, mm -hmm. and I should be very poor because wow. I haven't deserved anything and I haven't wow. earned anything. And uh, he's like, "You're. Why should you have a nice clothes, nice everything?" He's like, "You're a student. You should ride a bike, have a rucksack that you bought in a secondhand store, and that should be your life. Like, why, sh when you start er making your own money, then you can do whatever you want with it, but." And uh, now, why should I give you anything? So, yeah, y so y you yeah, didn't so have this money and he was, okay, that's fair for you because you didn't provide, you didn't have any yeah. Uh, yeah. contribution to society yet. So that's what you deserve. Yeah, but like even when I, you know, I, I went uh, to study in the UK and I had um, he, the money that he would, because I, I, I had a student visa, I couldn't be working officially. Like there was no way of me to get any money. <laughs> and so, well, first when I studied in school, <laughs> I was selling cigarettes in school when I was like 14, 15. Uh, nice. Because uh, in when I lived, uh, where I lived, they were one pound. Where I, mm, when I came to the UK, they were five pounds. I was selling for three because there was like dumping, uh, because I was trying to get people to buy them from me rather than to buy them in the shop. Um, and so like there was a little bit of hustling, you know, like he was always, and he was super proud of mm. that. Like definitely almost got kicked out of school for wow. that. But he was, he liked that, you know, that I had the, well, it wasn't the really, fiber. Yeah, sort of like that I had the brains, not the, br but like the entrepreneurship to, cool. to, to do something. And, um, he definitely was. I then <laughs> I worked in a, I worked as a promoter in nightclubs as well, and I also got paid for that. I but got paid to bring. I wasn't really a pimp, but I got paid to bring pretty girls to a night to the nightclub. So I would be like out in the streets, and I'd be like, "Hi, girls! We have these. We were at this club, and like maybe you could come join us." Da 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 da. And like I would get get paid for that. And he also really, <laughs> he also really liked that. And um, he said that. You know, like his friends know some real pimps. So if I ever want to get into that, <laughs> he's more than happy to introduce me. And I said, no, um, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's very interesting because uh, to say that you're street smart is, uh, is very interesting to me because, you know, when you grow up in um, not in luxury, you get to understand things that other people won't, won't understand ever. Uh, you understand especially human nature. A lot. Yeah, you try to read people. Yes. That's how. That's your only tool, really. Yeah. You don't have anything else. Yes, that's interesting. Yeah, it teaches you different things, I think. And yeah. um, but you know, like I would say that I am definitely. 
I would say that he kind of took it to a extent that wasn't is not really good for me because now even when I'm making money, I'm still trying to be like buying cheap stuff because I am just afraid of overspending. Does that make sense? Like I mean I do buy nice things. I'm not like I'm not just, you know, buying everything in second hand, but it just it came with like a lot of years of like working on myself. Like mm. I remember, oh my God, I remember when I lived in Spain. So I lived in Spain for a year. I remember when I went to mm, we went out with my friends and I really wanted a Coca-Cola, but I was like, oh, but this is stupid. The Coca-Cola here costs three euros. And at ho like at home, I have the same Coca-Cola in my fridge that cost me like 50 cents. And I had to convince myself to buy the Coca-Cola because I was like, come on, nice. Like, you really want that. You should really like, you know, you should really have that. And um, yeah. so it's a lot of it's it takes it to a little bit of an extreme. Yeah, tr it, tr it tricks your brain a little bit, but I think what it teaches you is 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 uh, invaluable, especially in times of crisis. You know, you know it, uh, um, when you've gone through those things, <coughs> I believe that uh, you know it forges you, and uh, you know uh, there is this uh, phrase in the Bible in the Bible mm -hmm. that uh, Jesus says. Uh, uh, some of those who are first will be last and some of those who are last will be first. Uh, and just to tell about the cycli... Uh, yeah, you know, the circle of life. The circle the of life. Cycli yeah, cyclity. I, I know the word that you were trying to and, say. And, uh, and, you know, especially in those times of that we're living today with a lot of uh, uncertainties, that's the type of uh, smartness that you want to have. Oh, yeah. When the COVID broke out, and I don't know why, but I always have cans of food in my home, just kind of saved, you know, just for the Black Day. I don't know what the Black Day was. I mean, it definitely came in useful for the COVID. I mean, the pan who would have thought in the 21st century that would have the pandemic? And uh, and my friends were like, why would you have canned? And I would have like all the the corn, the beans, the th and, and like people, they were like, why? And I'm like, I don't know. I just had it. And like, if I have it in my in my house at any given mo moment, I can just make something to eat, and I don't have. It doesn't necessarily have to be like all fresh and organic and all this. And so that really helped as well, definitely. <laughs> okay, how do you see Georgia now, um, and what is your input in the country? You know, I I still think that um, unfortunately we can't escape the success of Kaha Bendukidze because I think that the fact that uh, this country is successfully functioning now is a major thanks to him and even though it's been uh, 10 years that um, he's not part of the of the government um, and 10 years that we've had um, the opposition mm, sort of uh, in place um, I, s I think that Georgia is a a really great combination of all those things that I <laughs> that I read out to you. Um, I think that Georgia is. Um, there was a really interesting TED talk about uh, from the general manager of um, uh, Medicine Avenue uh, restaurant. Uh, what's the what is it called? Um, yeah, Medicine. I don't remember. If there's a number, but you know that one of the best. Anyway, one of the best. Um, restaurants in the world and he, his talk was called uh, un, um, unreasonable hospitality and so the, the the premise of the story that he says that uh, there were these people it's the michelin star restaurant it's like top of the top of the world we should ask those guys but mm -hmm. <laughs> it's top of the world and um, there's these tourists over there and they say oh we've been everywhere we've been to momofuku we've been to like all of these other restaurants the only thing that we didn't try that was a staple of New York, like um, of uh, New York cuisine, is the the hot dog, you know, the street hot dog. And he heard that, and he went downstairs, and he got uh, he got the hot dog, and then he convinced his chef to serve this hot dog to the to the people because he knew th they were serving like some something like mm, twenty year old twenty like something like aged in oak that was mm. you know lay, that was made by elves or something you know like it was just ridiculous things and then they were serving like a hot dog well of course they they did served it really well on like a really beautiful plate and like with the rat with the radish and everything and um um and people were shocked they were this was like the biggest thing i think that w that was the he was he said that that was the moment that kind of changed his career because it was the unreasonable it was unreasonable but it was just like unreasonable you are trying to do everything to make the 
you know, the, the guest film super welcome. And I think George and Zah definitely liked that because they were, you were called, I'll give you my coat, you know, like have everything. I'll take it off myself and do all of that. And I think that's definitely something to be, you know, there's a saying actually in Georgian that um, guests are a gift of God. And so this is when, when guests come in, this is like, wow, this is it. This is, I have to do everything in my power to make sure that they have the best time that they enjoy. It's really funny because, of, of course, there's so many Russian people coming in now um, in, in Georgia because of the war. Um, and um, the loads of uh, Georgian people are opposing of that because, well, for obvious reasons, because of the m war with um, Georgia-Russian war in 2008 and the previously Abkhazian war and, uh, well, <laughs> centuries <laughs> of, of Russian oppression. Um, and this guy was telling me, he was like, I was in a taxi and um, the taxi driver was like, why did you come? Like, you have to go back to your country and fight there with the Putin. You have to do all of that, da, da, da. And then he was like scalding him for coming here. And he's like, but have you been to Sikhnak? He's like, no, okay, we're going to Sikhnak. So like, <laughs> he could not stop himself. You know, mm. he was telling him all, but he's like, okay, but like, like we have to go, like, mm. that's it. We're, we're going. So um, it's that, it's an amazing trait that I, um, for many years, I think I, I resented myself when I lived in Europe because I was like, this, this is stupid. Why do I have to give my best things to someone else? Because that's what I would do as me, as a person. And I didn't know I was Georgian. You know, it's so interesting. I was always late before mm -hmm. in my life. And I thought that I'm just really poorly organized. And then I came to Jordan and I realized that I'm just Georgian. <laughs> 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 this is just life. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. And now I'm super chill about it. And I'm actually a lot better with time. But mm. it was a good accepting moment when I was like, ah, actually, that, that's, what it, that's where that comes from. Do you, do you believe in God? I do believe in God, but I would say that I am more of an agnostic um, uh, because I would say that I, I'm not a religious person, uh, uh, but I definitely talk to God, I definitely pray, uh, but I think that, you know, religions are more or less the same. It's all about having a conscious, like you're conscious, that, th that voice that says don't do that, that's God in a way. And I think that that's... Um, I think that um, it's a nice, it's a nice feeling to have when you when you have someone. When you think that there's a greater force that sort of supports you, you know, s uh, behind is is always there. And um, at the same time, I definitely believe in making wishes. Um, and but I think that it's like you're sending to the universe the thing that you need. But you have to be super careful with how you make your wish. Mm. And I definitely think that God is also, he's, he's like, oh, he's, it's like he's, it's the other department, you know? And he's like, oh, like, they will, they will do that. Like, but <laughs> just like, but I'm still here, but like, you just make the wish, but just like, make sure you, you phrase it really well. Because sometimes I would be asking for things and then that would, that wish would definitely come biting me in the, in the back. Mm. Um, uh, but I, think that the only thing that I, I, I think that in, in Georgia that I see somewhat of, um, of an area that I would like to work on, well, not I like to work, but I think that we need to work on as a country is more that the church is becoming more powerful and is becoming sort of like the another government of its own and it's uh, governing people in a way that I personally don't really like because I think that we... Mm, I think there should be more freedom to be who you are and you like if you are I don't know if you're gay if you like I don't know if you if you if you like men if you like women if you like both if you like so if you're bisexual if you're if you want to be trans if you want to I just it doesn't matter like it doesn't matter what label you put but like I don't think that that should be forbidden and actually I I just I somehow I have to get into the heads of Georgian people because there's a lot of homophobia for example happening Especially from the men's uh, side of the funny story. When I first came to Georgia, every, you know, you see all these men walking hand in hand, mm. you know, on the street. Like, they're just like, just like, oh. and I was like, wow, such a tolerant place <laughs> that they have all these gay people just walking around like this and no one says anything. And then I was like, um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I think that, I think that um, straight so cis men, so heterosexual men, should be super 
supportive of homosexuals because they, they if you think about this statistically <coughs> okay and it all comes down to statistics um homosexuals dress better they uh you know that they, they take care of themselves they uh, are more well-rounded more attentive more caring more loving more eager to express their feelings in one way or the other and if they're locked down to the idea that they can't show that they like who they like they will go out and find the best girls for them and there will be a queue of girls you know that would be that would ah, be standing so you reduce the competition so basically. so yeah so you basically <laughs> have to think about that the more gays there will be the less competition for you mm. and uh, so i i have said this to a few very georgian like this pe- and then when i say this then they're like you see the sort of you know in movies they go like the light bulb goes and mm. like mm. i mean it didn't go bright but mm. they were like ah. mm. like they thought of that from like a different perspective mm. and they're like Ah, okay, very interesting. <laughs> uh, definitely, the the gay people, especially I mean, here and and uh, in, in other uh, countries, but uh, here, you know, what uh, what 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 I miss is you know being able to talk about design, being able to talk about uh, the arts and things like that. And mm, most Did of my friends who I can talk with, they are they are gays, you know, because otherwise, you know, they're not. This is not the type of subject you can talk with. Uh, Mm. S- straight men, yeah. Like, uh, yes. Yeah. I mean, not all, not all, of course. Oh, I understand. But oh. y- you get, you get my point. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, how do you, how do you? Um, so I've, you've learned Georgian because mm-hmm. you didn't know Georgian, yeah. and now you speak ve- very well. Well, I don't, I don't think so. But I mean, they did, they do let me on national television somehow. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> a miracle to me, really. Um, yeah, it's a hard language, but it is also very logical in many ways. Um, and um, yeah, I think you just have to be open for it. I think Georgia is a way. I, I so I I, mm, I think maybe today I didn't wasn't really on point with all of the questions that you had asked me. Um, but I think that Georgia um, it's a very comfortable place to live if you can organize your life well because georgia is definitely moving towards western values so to say towards having you know like um having your life online having your ordering food ordering stuff like uh, you know having things brought to you uh, ordering a person who would come and fix your blinds fix your plumbing whatever you know so um so um but the Georgian language is uh, is the only thing that I would say is like is can be a problem. The barrier, yeah. yeah, the barrier. Um, but I think that for Georgians, as well as the the unreasonable hospitality part, if you show a Georgian person that you're a foreigner who is trying to learn Georgian, every time it, they it would just they they love you. They it doesn't matter that you don't speak Georgian. They will do everything for. They'll try to help you, and the, 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 that's the whole thing. So I think it's that having that extra, um, is that doing a little bit extra of like uh, trying to learn uh, the language, try w- because it, it does come in handy, you know. Sure. And um, I would say that six years ago when I first came, when well not when I first came to Georgia, because I came to Georgia with Kaha actually in 2007, uh, 2008, sorry, in the April. Uh, but when I moved to Georgia and I didn't speak like nothing. Well, wh- why did you move in the, in the first place? Uh, well, because, well, first of all, I was in the U.S. when I was doing that postgraduate diploma when my dad died. And, um, well, there was no other way of financing, to car- you know, financing my studies to carry on. So I came back to Russia where my mom was because there's no other, well, it was just, there's no home really. And um, that was Russia of 2000, after 2014. So that's the Crimea had happened. The the um, you know sanctions have been imposed. The prices went up. The sort of it's just like Great Depression in Russia started in 2014, and um, and then I was living between Russia and Georgia. I had these court cases and so on. And then when I won everything, well, first of all, I the the whole premise of of um, me inheriting uh, inheriting Kaha's, um getting Kaha's inheritance was that I fought for his universities because I knew for him that was the most important thing. And when I got the university, well, I gave away all of the businesses and, and so we exchanged with my um, father's wife. Uh, so I, um, she got all of the businesses that make money. I got the universities that make no money because it's a charity uh, organization. 
I also um, thought that for me, it was it was a thing that I really wanted to discover. Because, you know, like when I said about being late and how, uh, for me, I, I realized that actually I'm Georgian. I thought that maybe there are other things that I should discover about myself because that's an interesting thing because I've never lived in Georgia. Mm. And now that I do, yeah, there are faults. There are things that I would like to change and do better and stuff. But they're my people, you know? And then I I would like to help them be better. Chemebi. And, uh, uh, sorry? Chemebi. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Chemebi yeah, Aryan. And um, I... So it was definitely different different aspects. And I would say that I moved to Georgia because I realized that this is a place where so many things, you can do so many things better. And there's so much room for improvement for yourself. Like you can start and how easy it is to start a business, how easy it is to open up an account. How e I just, I couldn't believe it, mm. you know, because um, they were... Um, I got so used to uh, things being done here quickly, you know, in, in the public registry, I got like a passport and uh, they, I ordered another passport, you know, and so I came to Russia because I, my, I changed my surname and stuff, so I had to change um, my passport as well. And then like, oh yes, it's uh, 30 days. I said, okay, but can I pay it to make it uh, like quicker? They said, no. I said, I said, no, but I would like, and I didn't understand what he said. He was like, I was like, no, but I'll pay you. And I get my one, I was like, I'll pay you. And then he's like, no, not in front of the cameras. Oh. And then I was just <laughs> like, oh. And then like it hit me and I was just like, oh, that was so stupid of me. Of course, I paid my way around mm. um, <laughs> to get my passport um, done faster because 30 days is definitely really unreasonable. But um, yeah, I think you get used to, I just, it was a very pleasant feeling. After living in a place where things are so bureaucratic, bureaucratic yeah. and you come here and you're like, yes, wow. Is oh, that all? Oh, so this is how it should be, actually. Mm, this is absolutely. how. So absolutely. And um, yeah, it gets a little bit addictive. You don't really want to go back to other places <laughs> where yes, you have absolutely. to file things uh, in person and you know standing queues and so on. So. And, and now, how do you uh, how do you spend your time? What is it that you're doing with your life? <coughs> well, so as I said, the universities were one of the primary reasons why I moved to Georgia, and they still are because that they're. I think of them as my my brother brothers or or sisters. I mean, I don't know siblings. Mm. Let's put it this way: my siblings, because I have no no siblings, so many parents and no siblings. But um, um, and I think there's a definitely sense of responsibility for that because well, there's no one else who will take care of them like me. So I I recently defined uh, defined my role as a guardian of the universities because that's what that's what I have to do I have to guard them and have to make sure that they uh, persevere that they carry on that the idea that Kaha had in his mind of why he made this why he started this university and then the other one um, I have to make sure that it stays alive um, so that's a part of what I do and um, the second thing is that um, I'm happily married mm -hmm. and uh, my husband owns a chain of restaurants um, and um, I so which is called Strada I don't know if you're going to cut this but whatever it's Strada and then there's a Georgian restaurant which is called Doro and um, it's, uh, it's right next in uh, yeah, Martin Martin Shredi. Shredi. Yeah. yeah okay well thank you very much yeah. you've <laughs> been to Oro? Uh, to Oro I've uh, actually yes mm. both yes I've been to both uh, okay. they're in the same same uh, yeah. UNTER yes yeah, so most of the people have heard about Strada and not about Oro, which is crazy because um, I would say, okay, Strada is okay. Like, Strada is like, is your everyday food. It's like, you don't really, you know, you don't really pay attention. It's just like a place where you go, you have food, it's, and that's it. And Oro is this amazing place. Oh, my God. It's, it makes you feel things. It's Georgian, and it's Migrelian. And... Um, yeah, it goes like to to your core mm. sort of thing. Um, very good food, very very good. Definitely very recommend. Uh, dec recommend even though, had it not been my husband's, and I have said this, so I met my husband at Strada, mm. so I was going there before I met him. So I'm I'm free. Mm -hmm. I'm it's okay. Like I, I know I'm yeah interest. I'm no I'm not <coughs> biased, but well there is conflict of interest now because I'm now do their marketing for um, for the chain. And then, uh, yes, this new addition to my life that I became a TV presenter, a jury on a uh, Kitchen Wars uh, TV show, which is, uh, I made that wish when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I definitely wanted to work on TV. That was my love, loved, I really wanted to do that. 
but I never knew it would come bite me in the ass, you know, when mm. I had to speak Georgian on mm -hmm. TV. <laughs> you were like, why? <laughs> but you, you understand everything. In yeah, Georgia. yeah, no, I understand everything. It was just like, okay, mm, do you speak any Georgian? Abara. Uh -huh. Abara. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you, uh, but can you, would you like to go on national TV and speak Georgian? <laughs> uh, right now I'm not ready but <laughs> yeah but like okay but I still make so many mistakes but people just everyone's like oh and I'm like <laughs> why why because I can definitely express myself like I speak five languages but like Georgian is just not not the language that I would put on top mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um, and it is definitely a really hard because you are trying to you're you're trying food and you want to be really nuanced you want to pay attention to all of these small details and i don't i don't even when i learn the vo vocab you know it's still so hard to apply that to um you know in the moment because there's there's like 100 people watching you it's a camera it's literally 100 people at all times watching mm. like watching you eat and watching you then comment on their food and you're like i don't want to do this no i do i do i love it i love it i, I I'm really blessed to have that job um, because um, it's really all long hours. It's from like 11 a.m. till 11, 12, midnight, like after midnight. Um, but the f when I go in and then da -da -da -da, we're working, we're filming, da -da 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 -da, and then the first time I look at my watch is around five. So there's been six hours when I've just been working nonstop and I didn't notice. And I, it feels like, oh, it's may maybe two. So I think that I think there's so few joys in life when you it's so many it's so rare to find a, a, a thing that you do that you enjoy so mm. much that you don't even notice the so time. That's your thing. Yeah, I definitely. I mean, mm. I'm not sure that the TV the 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 um, and the viewers agree. <laughs> Uh, or let's put no. I'm not sure that the people who make the montage, <laughs> who make uh -huh. the cut, <laughs> the editing, <laughs> agree because a lot of the times they're like, "What is that word? Uh, what is that word? I don't know." Yeah, it's a this one, and then it's just a lot of, it's a room for a lot of laughter because mm. uh, I often forget simple things or I mistake things, you know. So it's regarding the university. Uh, you say you're the the guardian. Yeah, the guardian. Yeah, Guard guardian, doing, yeah. yeah. But are you involved in the operations or? Yeah. So uh, I would say it's more of a macro uh, overview of the university because I uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, during the pandemic, I was also pregnant and then I had a baby and then I was in the um, maternity leave, and we sort of uh, uh, everything got so uh, you know everything was happening online and so I kind of sort of distanced myself in a way of actively in being involved in in the uh, university operations um but i'm still so strategy or anything that has to do with new programs or grants or anything like that so i'm still involved with that but i am incredibly lucky to have the team that kaha left behind mm. um still the same uh, people yeah still the same people right. it was our the rector of both of the universities the same person so we are a unique place where that one person is rector of both universities we have same structure in both universities so they all so same rector same vice rector same uh, chancellor same everything but in both because it's the same thing really um, um he was his uh, deputy in all so my f my father was deputy minister of oh, he was my father was minister of economy minister of reforms a head of chancellor so and Vato Lejava uh, who is our rector he was his he was his deputy everywhere Got he it. went along so that's for me that's a he was a trusted very trusted yeah person. very trusted person and you you can't not fall in love with Vato Lejava because he is this um how does how do you say this he is he is common sense in a person he will tell you you will say something and like you have you pro come with him with the problem and he would then tell you how can this affect other people how can this affect this what will happen with that and oh it's amazing and you're like oh my god that's so amazing mm. that's just like and he will just be really yeah you'll just be really amazed with the sort of you like wow i didn't know a brain can work like that and it's really cool and um um, I think he can be a very interesting guest for yeah, uh, yeah for absolutely. your podcast for sure. 
who do you see right now as uh, maybe not as important that, uh, as Kaha, but someone who, who has a very positive impact on the country? Mm, I don't think that it's just one person. Because, um, you know, I, I think that um, Georgia is a really small country, but incredibly, there are so many talented people. It's like a very interesting combination of really talented people and really lazy people. And then in between, you think like, oh, like it's all the same. But if you separate them, it's amazing. So interesting. Uh, yeah, like if you think about that, um, Georgia is a tiny country, right? It's only, uh, what is it, 2.6 2 million people or 3? Three? 3.4, three, three depends on lots of people. Or maybe 3, well, whatever. So uh, Okay, 3. Three, three so and a half. So how much do we keep? Well, <laughs> no, no. But you see, so it's very small, right? Uh, and uh, Georgia has managed to find its own, for example, Tbilisi Fashion Week is like one of the top fashion weeks in the world. There's Milan Fashion Week. Okay, there's how many people? 50 million people in, in, in Italy? How many people? Uh, in Italy. In Italy, yeah, how many people? Probably something like this, 45, yeah. 50. Yeah. No, uh? 55 million. Yeah, okay. 55 million, so okay. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. There is Milan Fashion Week, there is uh, London Fashion Week, New York Fashion Week, sure. And then there's Tbilisi Fashion Week, which is crazy because it's mm. uh, such a small country and somehow we've managed to produce so many high quality designers that so many of fashion people are interested in coming to us, you know? And um, we have uh, Basilashvili, who is this amazing tennis player. We have Anita Rashvili, who is uh, this amazing singer. You know, who she is the um, soprano in La Scala, in uh, the, what's it called, the New York um, Metropolitan Opera. But, but it, it's like, it's crazy that in this tiny spot of people, there are so many talented individuals. I think that's 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 one of the things that keeps Georgia, for me personally, keeps it so attractive because I think if you go through, you know, like who you have around, you will definitely find those th those people who you'd be like, oh wow, this is outstanding. And this is what I see in our students a lot that, you know, they're so young and then they think of these amazing things. We have our graduates uh, from Free University, for example, <laughs> Uh, well, of course, they work in like Google, Facebook, uh, I don't know, eBay, Skype, uh, Microsoft, whatever, like any big corporation, like worldwide corporation, they, they work, they, we have employees there. But now it started to a point where uh, on LinkedIn, our graduates got um, this message that read that, oh, we know that you graduated from Free University of Tbilisi, we regard that as a, we regard that as a really uh, high uh, quality institution, and we would like to invite you to a, an interview. So for us, that's like, that's insane, mm. that, you know, it's such a small country, mm. and we have these amazing people. Quality, yes. Yeah. But mm. definitely, I mean, I'm not, I, I don't want to sound like, oh, it's the most amazing place on earth, because there's definitely, you know, this is what I'm saying, there's so many talented people and like lazy people, and then you mix it all together, and you're like, oh, it's a homogenous, like, oh, it's probably like a regular country. But if you separate that, mm -hmm. that's definitely, mm -hmm. yeah, it's definitely amazing. Um, yeah, like for example, if you, uh, Georgia is tiny nation, tiny land wise don't remember how many how many square kilometers uh, it is but um, georgia has something like 38 of the 42 soils that are presented in i think in europe which is the highest number which is the like the proportionally is the highest number and we're tiny mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know um Wh which which field do you feel uh, uh do you feel are going to be uh, booming in 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 the next future in Georgia, wh where where would you recommend people to invest or just to look at in, <sighs> in Georgia? Mm, well, um, I, I think I, I would be. Um, <laughs> uh, I think, given the fact that I spoke about an un unreasonable hospitality, definitely tourism sector is definitely something for people to consider because people are just discovering Georgia. And um, your uh, dear friends had rightfully mentioned that uh, in five to 10 years, I think Georgian cuisine, again, from this tiny little space, you know, it's gonna be everyone around the world will know about Georgian cuisine. Right now in New York, they call it the cheese boat, you know, the Ajaruli Khajapur, and they think that it's a New York staple now. Mm. Yeah, I literally, my friends, they're like, oh yeah, it's a New York thing, and I'm like, 
what do you mean it's a new mm. york thing this is from ajara ajara region you know this is where they started doing that and so um, i think people are definitely very interested in georgia and definitely uh we will see a definite big big boom post covid boom in tourism for sure um uh also um uh, there is a very interesting uh, moment for example there is um oh i cannot remember what is the name of the company um but the um, they have an online casino uh on a casino with the uh, real croupiers that uh, evolution yeah evolution gaming yeah. there we go Evol- i th- i remember it was in with an e you know you know what they do yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but isn't that amazing Ma- i'm not a fan i will tell you i'm not a fan because i don't think uh, bringing uh um gambling i don't think it's positive in but the long it's run. not but it's not gambling you, you, you no but i mean no okay but if you think about I this okay you have a business right gambling happens elsewhere you're not gambling you're not this you're not involved in this you're just a pr- so I'll, for those ah, who yes don't you know, mean evolution the company here yeah yeah, yeah of course yes. so evolution gaming what they do is they have they they started in um they i think they started in uh poland or something like this i can't remember where they start or check or uh in um Uh, Czech Republic. Anyway, okay. Somewhere in Europe, they started this um, online casino where you have a physical, actual person who is your croupier, who is serving. He's like, oh, Sonny, hello, welcome. How much? How are you feeling today? What would you like to do? How? What? What is it? The the reds, the black, whatever. What? What are you picking? So it's an actual, real person, and uh, they tried to do it in India, obviously, or uh, I'm not sure India or Pakistan. I, uh, I don't remember because it was cheap labor, right? And you have English-speaking people. But um, as it turns out, rich people are very racist. So <laughs> they were like, sorry, this is not the kind of croupier that we would want. And Georgian people are the most, the cl- well, they're, you know, white, Caucasian-looking people, and uh, they speak good English. And so now they have, I think it's two buildings that they have, which okay. is something like five floors of these small booths where this person is standing, and they're there it's it's just Georgian people we lost a lot of people by the way <laughs> from uh hospitality sector to that because if you're if you can speak good English like decent English that's it this is your road to success you get paid in USD you get uh it's a good s- good salary also you talk to people in English you're developing your language skills you're yeah m- maybe you don't really talk to other people like in real life but that's not that doesn't mean anything so there is um it's not the first um how to say it's not the first um instance like that uh there is a uh someone who has a um logistics company in US um like um for cars for example and the operating they operating it from here because you can find decently priced labor people who work well and they're operating they're they're answering the telephone for everything someone in louisiana is calling mm-hmm. someone in tweet be like hi can mm-hmm. you help me please i need to get the cargo from this place to another mm-hmm. and they're organizing everything so yeah. definitely people is um, another major point for for business um meant to consider something that they would like to something that they can use um and um i third i like to think in third so maybe i'll i try to think i'll try to think of a third mm, i think um maybe online stuff actually online and so not like porno <laughs> although maybe porno too i don't know it's not a field that i've ever looked into um but um online things because they we have really good uh, engineers like um and uh, i mean uh, software Com- computer, yeah, yeah computer computer soft computer, yeah. Uh, software and computer engineers and uh, if you want to um, if you want to make your app or if you want to make the next big thing whatever it might be or if you're doing with uh, if you're dealing with nfts or crypto stuff there's definitely a big um community here and um definitely something to look into mm, so very definitely can be very um you can have a successful life in Georgia i think if you plan things well interesting both in your general overall life and in your business as well financially as well yeah like um you know georgia in georgia if you throw like a potato in the field the potato will grow because the it soil will, it will turn in as an orange <laughs> <laughs> no i think it'll definitely grow as a potato but like the soil is so fruitful you know yeah, and yeah. i think it's the same here 
uh, that whatever you start, like it's very very easy can can pick up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Although it comes, of course, like it's uh, um, it can be. It's still slightly a weak market for Georgian people, but all the things that I have said, it's all for foreign people. Tourism, you're working with other people other than, so you're welcoming foreigners into Georgia. Whatever it might be, you're doing a hotel or a, I don't know, an attraction or something. Second is the, the human uh, business, so to say. Um, also, you're working for abroad, but you're using the mm -hmm. Georgian, um, you're using Georgia. Um, and then the third is, um, mm, what did I say was the third? Oh, the online. So it's the same sort of similar, uh, mm -hmm. similar thing because we have really, really good um, talented people here. Agriculture as well. Uh, you know, there is, there is a big chance for uh, Georgia, and as always said, is to skip a step. Meaning that, for instance, in Europe, we went from traditional agriculture to industrial agriculture. Mm -hmm. And now we see that, oh my God, we destroyed the land. <laughs> we need to do a little bit more organic. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that when you have a whole industry in place, you know, it's hard to remove it and yeah, start and over again. You know, there is mm -hmm. some um, inertia. But in, in Georgia, you know, you can just start from scratch and start f with the best thing. And then you can have very, uh, very good products that you can then export to Europe or somewhere yeah, definitely, else. Definitely. And, 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 and you still have the highest quality country because uh, highest quality product because one one big uh, problem my opinion and I think as a marketing specialist you would say the same uh, uh, Georgia has a uh, branding problem uh, it's not brand as a country uh, as a country it's not branded properly you know when people think about Georgia especially in the west uh, like I'm talking France UK uh -huh, things yeah, like that yeah, uh -huh. you know either it's not known there's a lack of awareness or it's known for things that uh, you know, are not not necessarily uh, very um, uh, how to say. Yeah, perceived and not perceived. Not well, perceived well. well yeah. Not perceived well, but it it has the uh, big potential to have it. Uh, for instance, the, uh, I will give you an example. Uh, there is a watch brand called uh, Patek Philippe that you know, but mm -hmm. so that's uh, one of the most expensive uh, mm -hmm. uh, watches, watches in, yeah. in the world, and they are doing their enamel uh, dial here in Georgia and Tbilisi no. and nobody knows it you know wow I did not know so that so what does it mean but that's but that's not that's not true you know like uh, my friends so I grew up in the UK most of my adult life was spent in the UK and they definitely know who Georgia is because despite being a very small country we have managed to be in the rugby you know in the six nations and now they're considering having in the seven nations which is also another thing you yes, see like yes. I see crazy. what I see what you mean but you know in the overall branding yeah, 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 you know oh, when you're definitely. thinking about the UK you're thinking about mm. Cambridge about this thing and but there's the potential to be seen as super high quality super refined Sure, you know, I, I think I'm uh, the, the only problem that I see with this, which I tol totally agree with you. you kn did you know that when um, after the Rose Revolution that um, Georgia was um, they would print Georgia's ad in The Economist I and know, stuff? I yeah? Know, I know. yeah, so back in the day, it was definitely good. The oh god, I don't want to talk about the interest rates that we had, it was amazing, but um, yeah, unfortunately, I, I think that the, the government uh, right now, it, it's not on their agenda, so to say, to be to be doing that, because they have, unfortunately so, they have um, given in to the, the, the uh, sort of like a KGB Russian, don't know, but like a uh, bad rhetoric that, like, for example, privatization is bad, and foreigners can't buy agricultural land why 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 can't i buy why is that if i'm a foreign person why can't i buy agricultural land why can't i have my own business here why w am i going to take that land away am i going to like what am i going to do with it like uh, what yeah exactly what wh where do i take it from here like why can't i have it and so i think that's unfortunate because you know back in back in 2008 um well the what well, back in 2004, I would say, you know, the transition that happened in Georgia and how Georgia was a failed state, failed country. And if you think about it, so if you if you close your eyes and you imagine a country where it wasn't that there was electricity cuts off, there was electricity switch on. So, you know, you knew that like at five o'clock the, the, there's going to be light and I can do my homework and this is how it's going to be. And um, from that to what we have, what we had in, even in 2008 or 2010 or 12, is amazing you know that just to see that that rapid change 
mm, you know, and the taxes, how did they had like 21 taxes? And then Caja was like, okay, we, this is crazy. No one's paying taxes first. So we have no money in the state, uh, in the budget. And there's taxes that we don't really understand. That no one wants to do this. So then they were like, okay, we'll get rid of half of the taxes. They, ha they left, I think in 2008, it was six. Well, it was first seven and then there was six. We will make it less. After the war, after the Russian Georgian War, they made it even. L uh, they lowered uh, the rates as well, and um, yeah, and people now we have we have a budget. You know, mm -hmm. we have we, we pay for things with from, from the government does stuff and. But, uh, but you know, I, I see uh, the 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 city is pretty well managed uh, in my opinion even now. Uh, you know, when I see all these infrastructures, uh, renovation of the street, you know, uh, uh, Costa, yeah, Costava, Costava, Costava yeah. Street, I think it's very nice. You know, even Chakchawadze, it's very nice. So, you know, I think even even on that mm. that term, I think it's it's quite well well managed. Uh, yeah, but okay. So the idea that they right. So in terms of urban planning, right? When you have, when you're trying to. The idea that they of the of the renovation that they have made is that they're trying to make less cars on the street yeah. because you had six lanes now you have one well mm. you have two, two. sorry yeah. two one going uh, one way one go the other so you were like okay well I'm not gonna be using my car I'm not gonna be driving on Chavchavadze because that's crazy I will be there for hours the idea I in reality is that you want to you want people to stop using your car and to start using your bike or yeah. public transport yeah something you know uh, alternatives but the public transport is not well developed that's the problem that we have you on Chavchavadze sure it goes okay but you can't, if I'm getting rid of my car altogether, it's not just for Chapchavadze, right? I'm not going to be using just mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. this uh, good infrastructure there. I will be, I'll have to go to Dihomi. I'll have to go to um, Lilo or something, you know, and, and it's, and then you, you stuck with the problem. So you can't be, so I think maybe they, they the priorities that they have set is, uh, it would look really nice, but then, on in reality people who are using it might it yeah practically it will be a struggle you know mm -hmm. um so i don't mm, with the city less of an issue but in terms of the country you know um mm, i don't know how to say this but um do you know so in in the western world right well i guess in well less so but in the western world you have the right and you have the left and it's a constant battle who is going to be the, the 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 democrats or republicans is it going to be the tories or is it going so it's a it's a it's a never ending right it's a one or two one or the other Wh who is who is now in power in georgia do you know what do you mean are they, they are they are they no are they on the right are they on the left are they but, but uh, that's what i find very interesting here is that it's very hard to understand what one part one one party is for so for instance georgian dream as i see it is more conservative morally but they are more like socialist in terms of taxes and you mm -hmm. know the the weight of mm -hmm. the government so it's it's not like just oh they're conservative and then they have they want low taxes and like like you would have in the usa mm -hmm. so the political chessboard is totally different yeah and it's so your yes to to your point it's hard to know uh what yeah, are where they fighting they are, for? Where yeah. are they? You yeah, know? exactly. But, but it's the same, actually. It's, it's, it's valid for uh, uh, Georgian and, and, and the opposition as well. I, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah, Georgian opposition is really living... Uh, uh, it's a nightmare. It's <laughs> I don't know. Like I think that... Um, I think Georgian, my, my a close good friend of mine, has said that Georgian opposition has lost morally because they could have maintained some moral values, you know, and they could have behaved better. And then by that standard, they would have, it would have been more obvious whom do you pick? Because you can't have, you know, like Nika Gorame had, <laughs> who is now in prison, unfortunately, uh, had a t-shirt which said, <laughs> so how do I translate that? So Bidzina is a, mm, He's fucked up in the head. He had that T-shirt, mm -hmm. and he was wearing it for months, and that's that's not right. Because as a, if you are, if you are, yeah, a absolutely. I don't think it's. Yeah, I don't, but think, don't it's think that's that's that's. Uh, I, I, well, I can't tell you how it's. Um, I can't tell you how it's. Uh, what's it called? Uh, 
I, I'm not against Nika Guarami of this, but I'm saying that I think that... Decency, that you're talking the, about decency. Yeah, like the decency is not there, you know, yeah. like, and I think that's why the opposition is struggling, really, mm -hmm. because there is just people who are regular people, they look at that and they're like, well, that's, that's not okay. Yeah. So they kind of drives, drives them off of, of giving them their vote, you know, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. and the, there is, everything has just too many people, too many parties, and like, yeah, I think there is no, no one, there is no, joint force there's no joint voice mm -hmm. that would say things that would be like oh this is how we should do this this is what we should do this is what you know there's no and so we are struggling as a country and so and and every every party has their own whatever agenda and a, their own uh, i would say like for example i i can't say i in our university actually very interesting that um i might support a political party myself but I never s say loudly who that is. I never try to advocate for that because I definitely understand that I have a certain, um, I have to maintain a certain neutrality yeah. with that because um, in our university, we have people who support different parties, who support different ideas. Uh, and um, I don't think that I, in any case, should influence that. Mm. Because I think that that should be neutral. Otherwise, that y I, otherwise I'm doing the same propaganda Absolutely. as like that I don't like in other in others. So mm, there are certain pa parties that I definitely f favor, so to say, and they're more of a libertarian, uh, more on the right. Uh, wi with w without. Mm. But on the right, like you know, it doesn't mean uh, really something here on the right. You know. Yeah. I agree. Because if you say you're on the right morally, you would be more. No, but I'm not moral. Morally, I'm I'm more on the left because I think that whatever you you do, you want to marry, you want to you want to marry. A, if I, if I want to marry a girl, why should I say why should I not marry a girl if I want? Like I like I don't I don't understand that. To me, that's 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 just something that I can't bring myself to to understand it. because, you know, there's so many and people will be like, oh, but how can gay people have kids? And it's like, well, yes, but how can you be such a shitty person and have kids? Why should that be allowed? Like, you shouldn't be a, a bad parent or a bad person. Uh, but like, there is no limitation to that. How does that affect one? Does that does that make sense? Like, sure, I don't, does, yeah. sure, sure, sure. And I think it's just more about being kind in general. Like, you want to be a, just a good person. You're if you're a good person, I don't care what whatever you do, you do whatever you do. But there is a this big big. Uh, tradition in Georgia where families are very present into the kids life and to uh, children's life and they have a lot to say about their choices in life about uh, oh lots yeah. of things definitely yeah but uh, you know <laughs> um, yeah it's very unfortunate when I gave that interview I said I mentioned that I gave an interview on, on Georgian style on, on my style of parenting and I said it's it's uh, I never had um, a Georgian parent that would like be doing everything for me. My mother was uh, similar to Kaha, like she would also be like, okay, you're at f after five, she was like, you're an adult. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you have to make your own decision. You are, you're the one who has to call the doctor. You are the one who has yes. to call it. And so for me, that's, I, I definitely feel of it in different, I look at it differently than, than Georgian people. But you know, mm, if you think about this, there are definitely gay people in Georgia they were brought up from the same style of parenting and somehow yet that still happened, you know? Mm, sure, sure. So, mm, yeah, it's, um, uh, yeah, it's uh, unfortunate, but I think that we will get there. I, I think that there is definitely one thing that I am super proud of when I say that I'm Georgian is that Georgian people are really free, freedom loving and they're free as people Yeah. because they fought you know, in True. the in the beginning of the 20th centuries, they fought against the um, the Russian Empire, and well, then yes, and the Bolsheviks, and and they and they got their independence. And uh, actually, Georgia was the first person, uh, the first place, one of the first places uh, on um, uh, in the world to have uh, women uh, voting, for example. Who were they? They were like, yeah, sure, women and men, sure, everyone can vote. Why should women not allowed to vote? Um, 
they fought in the uh, at the beginning uh, at the end of the soviet uh, soviet union's life you know they fought to gain their independence they fought again in 2004 uh, the rose revolution so i think that is in them you know it's kind of more they they want to preserve that more they it's hard t harder to chain them than other uh, people, well, other nationalities, mm -hmm. or I don't mm -hmm. know how to mm -hmm. how to distinguish maybe, that. Maybe maybe yes, yes, but definitely freedom lover. That's a good 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 way of, of saying it. And uh, I think one point that can make us very optimistic is the the youth, and not all, not all, but uh, you know there are some uh, young people that are very driven. They want to succeed. They want to work. They are serious. Um, they are well balanced. It's not like they're. Uh, uh, totally woke and you know just don't care about anything you know they they have a sharp brain they want to work they they understand that they can develop here and i think when you have those type of people those use i mean you're definitely going to have a future good country now one thing that is unfortunate is that a lot of them wants to go out the country and how do you build a country without uh without young uh young talents mm, well i d i think that you shouldn't um uh I, I don't think that you should forbid that or, any, or, or anything like that. And I think that by allowing them to go abroad and to see different things, you know, this is what the amazing thing about travel, that you, you will travel and then when you come back home, you will never look at your home with the same eyes that you had before because you've seen other things. I think that's the same. It's a similar thing that when you go to other places, you see other people, you see like, Huh, like you could also think do things differently. Mm -hmm. You can also do it like that or like this. Or, you know, I think that changes you as a person. You become more open-minded, and I think in the end of the day, um, yes, all of those people want to go abroad, but um, I think it's because they they don't see a successful future here. Whereas if they will go abroad and then they will see that there is a chance and that there's a potential here. They yeah. can. They will definitely come back. Sure. Uh, and that's what happened in two thousand and four. You know, so many when the the Rose Revolution had happened, uh, Georgian, they, they were they, they people who worked in the government were basically uh, like there was the French, there was the U.S., there was the, I mean, they were Georgian people, but they were just they were they were already holders of different passports, but they all came back to make Georgia a better place. And so, mm -hmm. I think it's all a matter of providing an opportunity to to them. And I think that. They would want to come back at sure. um, later on. Absolutely, uh, we will need a part two. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I well, I, I mean, I'm very flattered that you invited me um, uh, here. I'm not sure why would anyone want to listen to what I had to say, but I think no, um, it's, it's going to be very interesting, you know, to to have your views on the country, what you're doing. I, you know, th there is very little information in English uh, about Georgia. And, you know, just to show, like, who you are and what's your story, it's going to well, give lots of insights. Sure. I mean, um, I think that I was really inspired by your, uh, well, not just by your co podcast, but by your project, because I think that you're a foreign person and you are you seem to really enjoy Georgia. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think in your heart, you definitely are. Uh, yeah, you are Georgian. And, uh, well, you are Georgian? Ara. Yeah, you're not Georgian. I mean, not like maybe like distant relatives. Maybe, who knows? Yeah, exactly. Well, that's what I say about, I think maybe I have some Turkish blood because I love going to the bazaar. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I think that was really, that was really, I was really touched by that. And I think that that's so, that's so amazing that someone who can, someone who is, who comes from a completely different country, from a much better background, from a much better place. Well, if you think about, you know, GDP-wise or anything, France is definitely... You are coming from France. France. Yeah. Yes, yeah, okay. Thank God. Mm. <laughs> I was like, maybe I picked something up. Um, and, um, like, if you could fall in love with Georgia, and I think um, you're the main mission that you're that you're doing is for to make other people fall in love with Georgia. Yes. And yes, I absolutely. To, to raise awareness, to, to show that there is uh, ways to develop yourself here, to develop the country at the same time. Yeah. I, I, and I think that if you as an outsider could see that, I think maybe we have uh, we have something. Yes. <laughs> we yes. have something. Here. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, another thing, and that's what we, what we want to do here in Sakharov Insight is really 
I say raise the self-esteem of young people to show them that yes, there is a possibility here. It's not just reserved to a few uh, a few thousand people that can do things here. Lots of people can do things here. Of course, it's good to go abroad, but it's even better maybe to come back and uh, build something here. There's everything to do here, everything to do. Lots of opportunities in every single direction. And without brains, you, you don't build a country that's not possible. Yeah. So that's that's what we are all about. It's, um, you know, raising awareness about the country, showing that uh, there is excellence here. Again, uh, it's a matter of uh, self-image. Um, if you see yourself, if you see people doing great things here, now you'll start to believe, oh my God, this guy has come from the same district as I come from. He comes from uh, the Romy or whatever. And he's successful. He's doing these things. Oh, that's, in that's interesting. I want to do it too. You know, and we, we, I believe that uh, that's what we want to do. That's why we have uh, portraits where we interview uh, young, I see. Yeah, young yeah, yeah. kids, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, or kids or young people doing things here with their hands, uh, building things, even if it's small, you know. It doesn't have to be big at the beginning. It can, it can be small, but if it's in the right direction, you know, just to, uh, to show the people, they know we can do lots of things here and refine, refine things, mm -hmm. refined. So that's it. So, uh, Anastasia, it was very cool to have you. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I, I, I hope uh, it's, I yeah, it really touches my heart that you have this um, understanding of Georgia. Because I'm, I'm, I'm Georgian in a way, so I, I, can't really, I can't really do anything because that's my homeland in a way, you know, because I love it by default mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. Although it's a, it's a, I received that as a homeland because I wasn't, you know, that wasn't part of my identity. I still definitely associate with that. And when I look at you as a foreign person who so much um, enjoys this country and sees the potential that I see, I think that maybe I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's uh, really amazing. And I wish you all the best of luck. I Madaba. Sure. Um, yeah, we should do you a DNA test. Maybe we'll find out <laughs> <laughs> that you have some Georgian roots. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much for everybody. By the way, uh, the... Uh, Food that you saw in the beginning of the podcast is done by Le Gourmand. This is a, a catering company uh, in uh, Tbilisi, uh, done by two chefs, Carlo and Fabrice. One French, one Italian. And what they're doing is amazing. So uh, all the links will be uh, in the YouTube description and everywhere so you can check them out. I and have even Anastasia loved it and yeah. she knows food very well. I have <laughs> to say that it was really good. Well, you, if you come on, guys, if you mix a French and an Italian person together <laughs> and then they make food, how could, can, it, be not how could it not be good? <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but it was definitely high level stuff. So, good. I will, I've taken, I've taken a, a brochure. I definitely yeah. will be contacting the guys. In Super. The Thank you very much for everybody who, who followed. Follow Sakharvalo Insight, it's very important. Uh, follow us on Instagram if you want to know about the country. If you're a young Georgian and you w w need the tool to talk about your country when you're abroad, that's uh, very good for you. And thank you very much. Bye-bye.